Hey, Aaron here. Did you know that Cinema 4D has its own Greebles generator? It's hidden away inside of the Asset Browser. Now you can find the Asset Browser right here by clicking on this icon. Now I've got my Asset Browser open down here. Yours will probably open on the side. In any case, what I did was I was just kind of looking around inside of here and I noticed the Nodes tab, so I clicked into that. And when I scrolled down, I found something called Geometry Modifier. And I was like, hey, I like to modify geometry. What do you got? So I scrolled down and found this thing called Greeble. Let me delete our cube here so we can start from scratch and I'm going to add a cube in right here and I'm going to use the place tool to place it on the surface of a plane that we've got there and then I'm going to go into the geometry modifier section and I'm going to double click on the greeble here and then I'm going to take this greeble here and drop it inside of the cube. Now you may have noticed that we instantly generated more geometry. There was just one face for each side of the cube. Here, take a look. Let's remove it for a moment. And you can see one face. When we drop this greeble thing in, it creates more geometry. And the way that it's doing that is if I click on the greeble and then I look inside of its settings, I can see that there's an initial subdivision number and that's set to one. If I set it to two, we can see more geometry. Now there's a limit on how much you can give here. So what I'd suggest is going back to your cube or other object that you have and adding geometry there. So I would set this to something like five by five by five. And you know, let's start there and see if we need to add more geometry. Coming back into the Greeble settings, I want to change this from the method of interpolated mesh and weight to noise selection. And this starts giving us little bumps and things that we might expect to see when we think about greebles. Something else I'm going to do is choose a different kind of noise. So instead of Perlin, I'm going to go with Mod, which is a more cubic looking noise and perfect for the kind of thing we're trying to do here. I'm going to set my threshold to 50%. I find that's a sweet spot for getting the most extrusions and intrusions, if that's even a word in this case. I mean, I know intrusions is a word, I just mean I don't know if it applies here. Anyway, I'm going to extrude quite a bit here, bring out the pieces a lot, and I'm also going to bring them back in. And something else that we can do is taper it. So if I crank this up, you can see that we're getting some tapering effects. I don't love the look of it with the tapering and the threshold where it's at. So if I crank up the threshold, we get none of the stuff going in and more of it going out and it's definitely tapered more. And I can crank up this taper far beyond the number that it has here. I can set up to 60%, for example, and we get tight little points here. By the way, I have a Redshift camera and I've got it set to bokeh, so it's giving me depth of field. I'm gonna turn that off so that we can look at things a little more closely and not have that happen. So you can see here, we've got this geometry and if I bring the taper back to a lower number, why don't we just set it to zero for now, and I set the iterations up to something like five, and I bring down the threshold, we're gonna to start to see little pieces building off of it. So again, my iterations, if I bring it down, we've got it like that, bring it up, and it starts to add pieces to it. Let me pull back out and take a look at this. That's starting to look pretty cool. But I do think I want to bring the extrusion down a bit. And I definitely want to bring it in so that we're going back inside in some ways. Pull in a little tighter here. And I can scale down the noise to 10%, which makes it a lot smaller and a lot more pieces. Or I could bring it up to 50%. So you can see we can do a lot of cool stuff here. I'm just going to bring down the maximum extrusion a little bit here. And I want to create a bunch of little windows. So let me bring the scale down quite a bit and let me really lower this down and so we can create little windows there and I can even scale the whole thing down a little bit and maybe bring up the subdivisions a little bit too and you know what I'll set the maximum extrusions back up to 20 and then here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna grab hold of my cube I'm gonna control drag click to duplicate it I'm gonna get rid of the greeble on the second cube and I'm going to give this material a glowing emissive material. Now, I've got a bunch that I made here, but I'll just make one from scratch so you can see how to do it. The simplest, fastest way, I'm just going to add a new material. I'm going to jump into the material editor, make sure I have it selected. And we're going to go down to where it says emission. And I'm going to change the color to something like, let's go with blue, why not? I love blue. And I'm going to set the weight of the emission up to two. And I'm going to apply it to this second cube right here. And then I'm just gonna scale the cube back until, you know, just, just a few spots of light. I think that's looking really cool. Let me just pull back a little bit, rotate around. Yeah, I'm digging it. 
You know, my only complaint about this, because this is pretty cool, is that there's no random seed generator. So, like, this is the shape you get with these settings. You can't randomly change the noise, at least not to my knowledge. But all in all, I think it's pretty cool. And there are a lot of other Greebles generators out there, and you can also use a cloner to create Greebles, which is pretty cool, and maybe I'll cover another tutorial. But for a fast, simple Greebles generator, this is pretty nice. Oh, and uh, it's free, so there's that. I think it goes without saying, although I'm going to say it anyway, is that a good material goes a long way, especially when you have very clean geometry like this, even with these little greebles, it still looks very clean. So finding a good material to help accent and sort of sell the idea that you're trying to sell is really helpful. And, um, you know, the pixellab.net has a bunch of really cool sci-fi circuitry type stuff right here in their uh, Redshift Cinema 4D material collection. I'm just going to grab hold of this one and drag it onto the cube. And it's really important to make sure that you're using cubic mapping because it may not show up the way it should. So I'm going to set it from UVW mapping over to cubic. And if we pull in, I mean, we're really selling this whole like bits and pieces kind of thing. There's also another really cool metal that I saw in here that I thought I would take a look at. Uh, there, it is. there it is, right here. Let's drop that on there. Yeah, it's looking pretty nice, actually. Anyway, I hope that this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz. I'll see you soon.